Warning, the following podcast contains strong language and themes of an adult nature, including offensive words, lewdness, risque situations, implied nudity, sexual content, poor behavior, depravity, innuendo, lecherous thoughts, naughty actions, anachronisms, indelicate expressions, feats of lyrical sublimity, suggestive imagery, obscenity, eroticism, farce, mischief, romance, high art, tomfoolery, feminism, early modern English, sex positivity, irony, comedy, drama, and satire. It is not suitable for children or the faint of heart. Enjoy. The Banging of the Shrew High Shakespearean Smut for the Lowly Stage Presented to you in five acts of tongue and Previously on The Banging of the Shrew, Baptista has ordered Kate to take Peter as her customer, and old Horens has commissioned an inspection of all the women in the brothel to confirm Bianca's health and virginity. Act 3, Scene 1. Playing Doctor. <clears throat> Thank you, good midwife. I concur. The room will well suffice for the examinations. Mm, well, as I know and said, tis true. Though for my life, I see not why your doctoring is needed here. I pride myself to be most watchful of my girl's good health and see their ever rosy cheeks and well with best of skill and care. You'll find them all fine fettled. Of this in your fine expertise, I have no doubt. For surely your experience and practice in these matters far outweigh my own. Though I'm commissioned to report to he who paid me for my services, if you so please, I'd much appreciate your help and guidance, for I'm sure I've much to gain in knowledge from the practical employment of your craft, and glad I'd be to share what skill of treatment I have also. You speak too much, but you say well, good doctor. Young man! Huh? Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Go fetch the girls for their exams. Yes, ma'am. I'll seek them out in haste. Oh, oh, don't tremble uh, too much as thou goest out. Mm. In haste, thou knock the walls down with thy keenness. Mm. Poor awkward lad. That boy is near to bursting. <laughs> yes, an imbalance of the semen. Such a common malady in all young men. Well, this one needs some letting for he pops. He's like to break in half. <laughs> In faith, tis true. Please, <laughs> God. <laughs> Look at him hop just like a bunny. I bet you he frags like a jackrabbit, too. <laughs> Love, is thy prick as pretty as thy face? <laughs> Wilt thou be rich when thou art made a doctor? <laughs> when thou art rich, thou canst examine me as often as thou likest, pretty one. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Trollops, all right. Don't tease the human so. He's as pink and stiff as sandstone now. Leave him be, all of you. Nicole, thou goest first with the doctor, and the rest of you will sit and wait your turns for your exams. Go on. No sulking. Nicole, off you go. As you wish, midwife Hecker. Please, young miss. Mm. Uh, fie, young man. Lookest thou upon those girls as would a primitive beholding fire, who's never once so struck a match. I, I'm sorry. They're not the holy relics or a chorus of angels up on high. Thine eyes won't burn to spy on them. No mystery to be afraid of. They have bodies plain as thine or mine. Plump thighs and breasts and cunt. A bit of lace and silks there just to dress them up. Gods, here's a future doctor blushing at the thought of cunt. No bother. Thou wilt see enough of it in time to jade thee well. Ah, uh, be of use, young man, and set up this curtain around the table here while I best go and aid the doctor. For it is clear he's no experience in treating women folk. Ah! God's hell, what loomed chaos! <sighs> Am I too late, good sir? Uh, Bianca! Thou hast come at last! I'm sorry if you've waited. Even doubting cynics would hold their breaths till thy appearance won by their pure constance. <laughs> you are funny and strange to me, young doctor. She knows me not by my voice. I am her Luke. 
My pleasure is to have thee here, fair miss. Shall I disrobe for my exam right now? Oh, yes! Uh, uh, no! Um, uh, I mean, uh, I don't know. <laughs> <coughs> you there, apprentice. I wish word with thy learned master. Where's the doctor? He is busy. Are ancient aches and pains afflicting you? You wish a remedy for halitosis? Of course not. Ah, gentle Bianca. Good morrow, fair rosebud. Mm, yes. Good day to you, signore. I am most pleased to see thee bright and well, the pristine model of a courtesan. I trust thy virtue being questionless. <laughs> but hast thou been examined yet? Why, no, my lord. Good sir, I was to give exam to her this very moment. <laughs> Come, Bianca. Oh. I should attend as well. No, sir. Oh, I... Most surely you understand oh, no. a gentleman must give a lady privacy in what? matters such as these. Oh, yeah. As you, I... a gentleman must know. Uh, uh... So sit right here oh. and wait where you belong. Hello there, gent. <laughs> <laughs> Do hurry, please. In haste. And glad I'll do my job, sir. Come, fair lady. Oh. Psst. Josie, seize this rash I got last night. Is it the crabs? Oh, that's but only chafing. I've got a talc I'll give thee for it, love. Zoons. Feared I am for mine own dignity. <laughs> well? Well? Shall you begin? Oh, yes, uh, I shall. Um, well, uh, let's see. I will assess thy frame's condition first. Thy limbs are of fine form. Thy shoulders, marble archways, faith, the trusses that hold up heaven's thousand stars, <laughs> and roof the holy mechanisms of thy heart and breath so clearly heaving in thy chapeled bosom. Oh my, what words. <laughs> Sorry, I meant to say in physics terms, um, thy frame is fit. You think it's so? I know it's so as my profession. Mary, then, your profession I will trust. Would you now like to listen to my heartbeat? Yes! Uh, let me with mine ear to know thy pulse. Well, do you hear my heart? In faith, I know not where thy heartbeat ends and mine begins. Perhaps tis hard for sensing through my clothes. Pray, let me loosen this and make it better. Gods... Mine eyes knew not sight until this day, for never was pure beauty so portrayed. Carvers of stone have not perfected such designs as molded here by divine touch. And I know now what art is. No, tis thee. Oh, you speak so well of me, I'm like to blush. Alas, I am too forward by thy sight. Blush not, good sir. Your flattery doth much endear you to my heart. Your zeal and shyness befitting such a bookish, earnest youth. In faith, such reverent speech as yours reminds me of another youth I know. Ah, oh, me, sweet Luke. Alas, that he is gone from me. Dost thou then wish him here? Oh, yes, I do. Then Luke is as thou wishest him, for he is I, and I have come in want of thee. <gasps> oh, my! I have disguised myself as hired man to the old fool pantaloon that I may woo thee, and so prove my love. Oh, my! How bold thou art, dear Luke. I'm stirred. Thou art? Oh, yes. But it is madness to be here. Such trouble will there be if we are caught. Fear not, sweet Bianca. The plan is fixed. <sighs> oh. How long doth it take a fellow to find a woman's purity? If by a lad as young as he is, a long time. <laughs> and when he does, I'd say he stays for but five seconds. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Apprentice, hast thou finished in thy work? Uh, uh, uh. Signore, you do mar my modesty by your intruding so. Gentle Bianca, I do apologize. I... 
only meant to see. You if... must show patience, sir, and let this good young physic do what acts he can. Yes, spit in your hand, man, and come again. And after he is finished with his labor, thou wilt have leave to meet with me, dear maid? I'm sure. If you but wait a span away, I will. And be the better for it, sir. Now, please, I've much to do. If you but lend us the good honor of your absence, sir. I shall stand aside. By and by. Good man. <sighs> <laughs> Were we not here in your examination, wise doctor? Yes, I shall continue so. Uh, let's see. Ad corpus ex femina poultra. <sighs> <sighs> Beguiling be your terms. <sighs> Construe me, doctor. I'll show thee. Serratus anterior, mm. as I have told thee. Latissimus dorsi, oh. that it is I, Luke, come to woo thee here. Clavicula ex amabilia, oh. to be alone with thee. Sternilus clivo, mm. wish I. Like fascia angelicus, oh. I love enjoyed with mine own love for thee. Oh. <sighs> Now, let me see if I can conceive your terms. The serratus anterior, thy boldness does spark me to core. Latissimus dorsi, but I am bound by brothel principle. Clavicula, and warned against true love. Lac fascia angelicus, but still, my love for thee is hot. Thine own to take if thou lovest me. Love, love, I do. Oh, dear, how I want to make love to thee. Alas, if thou wert but inside me now. I know not what is taught in colleges of medicine, nor what techniques required in the inspection of a woman's body. Oh, fiddle. I'm not surprised by that at all. <laughs> oh. But to think a man of my high station is forced to share a bench with common strumpets. What were my bettered peers to think if I was seen at this? I shall be made to wait no longer. Sir, you must be finished now. One moment, sir. I've not no, yet. No, I'll have the answers that I bought and paid for now, young fellow. Is Bianca pure or sullied? I'll not have her if she be touched before me, so befouled by sluttish pestilence. Sir, I am expert in these kinds of matters, unlike the common bearded layman who must purchase for him every service rendered. In sooth, I claim Bianca is most pure, for in faith she hath been most purely touched, touched by heaven above, sinless and light, kissed by the airy way in that blessed and brushed from angels' wings, and thus is lofted high over all others who but shame perfection. Especially all ancient, dirty lechers. Oh, me. <laughs> what estimations from a doctor. Oh. He thinks he means to turn my cake to dough. Oh, good graces, oh. Signore. It is improper for you to be here during the exam. I've come to query for my purpose here and found that my intention's been perverted. <clears throat> You're in a brothel. What did you expect? I mean by him. Aye, that can be as well, if that is to your liking. No, I mean my intentions toward her have been perverted. Aye, man, that much is clear. Mm -hmm. Now, oh. sir, I must make orders since here is mine office. So I order you away. Come back when later we've finished and I'll sort you out. <laughs> but mistress... There'll be no mistressing of me. Oh. Now out. Or is there more to try in this regard? Uh, I'm no longer sure. I'll return and on. Well, now be a good sir and go your way. Uh. Uh, good day to all. 
Good day, Senor Horns. Right, then. I see I can't let none of you out of my sight for longer than a moment. Up, girls. Up. Carrie, Petra, Josephine, I see thee there, Rachel. All of you go and wait in the exam room for your turn. Bianca, you as well. Go on. Yes, midwife. I'll go too and assist. <clears throat> Not so, young man. Empty those buckets by the door and clean them with cold water. Perhaps thou shouldst pour a bucket of cold water on thyself as well. Go on. Yes, midwife. I'll to work. <laughs> Such a do, but nothing so much as sex. <laughs> what say, midwife? I've got bright on my dong and need some ointment. What to cure me quick? <clears throat> I think there's not a salve with strength enough to clean up that gross thing. Oh. I'm off my stomach. Have heart, midwife. Take us a closer look. <laughs> More, you ask? Don't fret. The banging of the shrew will return right after this. Like what you hear? Then rate and review us on your favorite podcast service. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Banging of the Shrew. And visit our website at bangingoftheshrew.com. And tell a friend about us, too. We now return to The Banging of the Shrew, a comedy of sex, love, and foul language in five acts. Act three, scene two. Peter plays the peeping Tom. Fie. The blasphemous, contemptible villain. How dare he name in vain the principles of Aphrodite by accusing me? Of not knowing my purpose, nor my role. What shame he offers her, what insult. Fie! Never have I been so provoked, not once so vexed as by his galling utterances. They hang still in my mind, reverberating without abatement. What a waste of thinking. I'd smite him from my brain and blow away the desiccated ashes of a spirit far from my thoughts, so not one trace of him remained. He dare presumes to name my pride and think he can so strip my pride from me? The loggerhead. I'll think no more on him. Without pride, what am I? Should I instead lack dignity? Be pliant, a soft tissue, and give myself away? A vacant vessel to be filled by the whims and wills of others? Why, yes, sir. No, sir. At your pleasure, sir. To think men be so dense as to desire this thin illusion so clearly unreal. The fools discharge their very souls to dark oblivion with ignorance of what they sacrifice. They crave, demand, and beg. They turn thyself to sylph-like smoke and vapor, as like junk knights who chase the dragon's tail forever. Thou art breathed in as if thou wert nothing. And thus the war is fought. Nothing wanting nothing. <sighs> the siege continues on relentlessly. Thou wouldst surmise the weariness of this defense would soon erode thy will. I'm tired. But I will not relent. 
each eve, before the battle, I gird up myself to fight. Not to be taken, but to champion mine own self's borders and delineations. For there will be no rest from it, as long as men presume to have their wanting way. But I am better at this war than they. For I control the field and can't be conquered. This field is mine, and it I'll not surrender. This is my pride, not to be broken through. Like man has said, to mine own self be true. Tis time, and I am ready. <clears throat> you may enter. Good eve, miss. Uh, Mistress Kate, am I too early? Oh, good John. I should set the clocks by our engagements week by week, for thou dost come at the appointed hour without fail, as the gentleman I know thee to be. My rough hands be workmen's, not gentlemen's. Cut. Any true and loyal customer deserves the title of good gentleman, and thou art welcome in my chambers, dear. So, come. My bed doth welcome thee as well. Some chintz plank this very moment. And by the sound of it, she's hot and bothered. <laughs> oh, boy, by keyhole's light, a view to boot. God's wound, for God's getting his knob turned well. <laughs> oh, aye, good man, grab and suck. Those handsome titties! <laughs> Away with thee before thou spunk the floor, you dripping cod. Go meet thy hand in darkness. Oh, perchance I will. And think on sluts galore. <laughs> Pervert. But still. By keyhole's light, what harm is it? Oh, yes, good. Touch my cunt right there. Oh, mistress, thou art a heavenly creature. Sweet dear, we'll wait no longer. Enter me. Ah. Ah. But soft, what light, what show my spying takes. Some good old-fashioned fucking in her bed. I must concede tis pleasant sight to once again see simple laying by and by. He humps her well. That's right. Give her a lash of film from my old cricket bone. Good man. Not so fast. Slower? Slower. Yes. Oh, yes. That's it. Oh, that feels so good, John. Just like that. <sighs> How passionate she is in giving orders. If I knew not I was within a whorehouse, I'd think this were a man and wife engaged in lovemaking, him working for her pleasure. But she's a beauty, aye. Indeed, well worth the try. She hath a splendid body, built for sweat and sexing, shaped and curved enough to make any man's pego stand on end. Zounds! What technique she has! What skill of Congress! See how she breathes and heaves against his thrusts. Her motions are as constant as the sea. And see her hand on the small of his back that presses and guides his efforts just so. The lightest expert touch hath hold the reins. Strange. She's below him, yet tis she who rides. 
She knows what she is doing, to be sure. I am impressed that man has lasted this long without squirting, given her hot charms. Yeah, that's it. Oh, God, that's good. I'm nearing. Can you feel me getting wetter? Uh, yes, God, yes. Good. So good. Do not quicken yet. Yes, mistress. Uh, hmm. uh, oh. uh, what a queen she would be if she were perched upon a throne as yeah. thus. What regal skin she bears in her command and majesty. Faith, her impressive will, would be mistaken as God's own word and rightly worshipped by each happy man who came into her queendom. She is so certain in her pleasure-taking. Look at her grip his chest and clutch his hair. Look there. The swelling of her ardors brought a trembling to her gait. I'd swear she's bound to falter from her saddle. It was not so patent clear she knows the quickest route to her own oblivion. God's truth, she's hot. What wonders have I witnessed in this moment? I'm fixed, as breathless as she's now, past spent and warmly glowing. Hath there been an act more stirring than her unpretended sex? Oh, I'm hard as a rock in seeing her. My lady, did you come? Yes, John, I did. And it felt good. Oh, good. Now, come to me. Uh. Oh. 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 Uh. Yes. Uh. Fuck uh. me. Heavens, what singular joy that it must be to have her in thy bed. I understand the cause now of her high and prideful air. Her skill is unsurpassed, for she takes pleasure in her work of sex as much as I could take in having her. And that may make the passion all the richer. I wonder, will she come like that with me? A more formidable companion I cannot imagine in my bed, for she's equal to me, in heart as well as lust. Would any other woman suit me ever after the coup of her as paramour? For me, perhaps, there is no lover better. If so, well... Tis a pity she's a whore. No time has come. No time is near the hour. They're done. I know not if it's been an hour or just six minutes. Time doth seem to flow more queerly in the mist and fog of sex, where ticking seconds change to pants of breath, to heaves of chest, to drops of sweat, to thrusts, to grinds, to ruts, to moans and scratch of nails, again, again, again. And time itself seems lost until the fucking's done. They come. You! Excellent show, man! Thou nearly hadst her on the ropes, though I think she had thee instead, and was the victor in the end. <clears throat> Villain! What cause have you to step one foot here in my private chambers? As much cause as this man here to put his dick in thee, mistress. I know, for I did see it all. Ah, uh, thank you, mistress. Uh, I'll pay the madam now. For thy good service, it's thee should be paid! <laughs> Well, well. How farest thou, good mistress? Well? Unwell, that I'm now in bad company. What? Me? I, for in faith you are a pervert. 
Do not deny it. You were spying through the keyhole like a true degenerate. Well, yes. Among my many qualities, I'm gladly too a pervert. Gladly did I spy, and glad am I by what was seen. My cock was hard as like an iron key. I would have shoved it in the keyhole, too, if there'd been oil and the keyhole larger. Thus proved the worst of any libertine. What's next? To watch while I make water in a chamber pot? Faith, you are oversexed. Your normal sense is dulled by engrossed glut, seeking out strange and stranger still perversions to feed your quenchless appetite and lust. Perhaps tis thee then now, my new perversion. Uh, For seeing thee be fucked hath whipped in me a hunger like I have not felt in years. Tis only thee can sate my hunger now. Oh, is this the aim of your invasion here? To spy, be crude, and tell me that you're horny? Aye, plainly, yes. I have come to inform thee that I'm ready now to consummate our sexual arrangement. Fie! What, now? Yes, right now, in my quarters, if you please. I'll please not, if you please. It is too soon as well too late. I'm booked my evening full and need not bookends to my night. Now leave. My Kate, I've purchased up thy time, and thee I do possess this night. I am thy king and patron. Thou shalt treat me with respect and do thy duty. <laughs> Thou deserv'st no respect, to be sure. Thou art not a king. No, not even a man. Haps thou art dog, asp, ass, or ape, but certainly no man. I'll show thee what an animal can do if I am not a man. Fie! Fie this place! Turns out tis not a brothel, but a manger. If I'm but common livestock. So I'll howl and bark and cluck and cow and piss and shit what where I will. I'll kick the walls to pieces. Thou art a madman. No, not man, but mad by thy appraisal. Let us tell the world of this and my mistreatment here today. Fly! Fly! This brothel shit not fit for men! Run, if ever ye hope to fuck again! What trouble's this? Katie, are you all right? And here comes every soul to chapel's call. What, come you for good services? Fly all! Apparently there is no whore but me! What horror indeed! Please calm ye, sir. Peace, peace. Please, sir, haven't you heard? I am not sir nor favorable, but fair. Not so much man, but ma'am, and deemed far better prostitute than she or any slut this gaming house claims proffered. Fie, tis I more bona fide. This cheating shop stocks nothing more than deeds. Sir, your mad words are past all courtesy. I think it would be better if you leave and then return some other day when you are more clear-headed. Then we'll right all wrongs. <laughs> An excellent idea! I will not stay, nor shall I ever come back here again. Grayson! Where is my wretched man? What ho! Vanguard! Collect my baggage, prep our exit, draw forth thy rusted sword, and clear our path! Wipe it off on these silks and show some teeth! Defend my maidenhead against these pirates! Aye, sir! I'll take no booty! Except this car! Not I! No! Dad, I'm hoofbeat. Clear the way. I've never had such chaos in my brothel. Madam, I've proof this brothel is no brothel, and I'll not hesitate to share the news with all. Thy mistress Kate claimed best of house, more like is not a prostitute at all, for Kate in faith is faithfully in love. <gasps> Thou liest! This madness is most alarming. It's the insanity of love that sounds these bells, for this proud meritrix has fallen in love with one she rates above all men. Uh. Tis mistress Kate in love with mistress Kate, a notion that I've little interest in. And so I'll leave, for there's no proper whore here for me if tis just this doe-eyed lady. Mm. Thou knowest nothing, man. I say thee halt. This house and I shall not take such a front. For honor's sake, then, I shall sleep with thee. Then thou shalt take leave and never return. Mary, then, shall you come with me this moment, or do you wish to have some time to bathe first and prepare your person for our meat? I'll bathe first. Good. 
Please, at your leisure, then. I shall await your presence in my chambers. Good eve, mistress, madam, and all. Come, Grayson. Excuse me, if you please. I'll to my duty. Oh, Jesus, save my brothel from this chaos. Marie, be kind and straighten up this room. Let us away before the walls come down. Aye, if their lovemaking is like their war of words at all, its force is sure to bring this house down to its very founding stones. Oh. 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 Sure, woman! <laughs> Drop thy chores and draws the same! The midwife's cleared my cock of all disease! I'll not trust thy assurance just the same, for tis no salve nor salt could cure thy sleaze. Oh, fie! Pull me, pickle! Ah, not far a nickel! <laughs> On the next episode of The Banging of the Shrew. Let's have more. Though I know at heart thou wantest it now, naughty girl. Fantasy. You surely must be joking. Oh, but I think I'd like the full girlfriend experience with thee. What? Let us have some kissing on the lips. Good God. Some foreplay. Some tender caresses. I should be sick. Poetry. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? No, no, no. Advanced role play. Spank me. Spank me. I have been so bad, and only thou canst chasten me so good. And the midwife delivers good news. Oh, don't tell me thou art pregnant too, Bianca. Oh, goodness. All that and more on the next episode of The Banging of the Shrew. The Banging of the Shrew was written, directed, and produced by Joseph Stephen Leonardo and starred Bridget Garwood as Kate, Isaiah Music Ayala as Peter, Brianna McKay as Bianca, Mason Aiken as Luke, Perry Shields as Horace, Deba Rothart as Madame Baptista, Melissa Marks as Helen Hackett, Michael Grancolas as Dr. Lawrence, Alan Merritt as Grayson, Glenda Suggs as Maria, and Maggie Gagliardi, Angela Ariana Perkins, Mia Passarella, Claire Munns, and Keely Jimenez as Josephine, Nicole, Rachel, Carrie, and Pat. Respected. Matt Sosa as John, and was narrated by me, Sam Keller. Our sound engineer was Lynn Earls at EMP Studios. Music for The Banging of the Shrew was written, arranged, recorded, and produced by Zach Tabor. Editing and sound design by Joseph Leonardo. With Foley by JRS Productions. Maggie Gagliardi was our production assistant. And cover art was created by Haley Breen. And additional artwork and illustrations created by Mia Passarelli. Matthew Michatich and Joseph Stephen Leonardo, executive producers. Special thanks to Bridget Garwood, Daniel Kluger, Scott Forbes, Matt Temple, Todd A.O., Jeff Peters, David Jeffries, Scott Haller, Tim Hooten, Sarah Lanka, Leland Jackness, Alex Rapport, Julia Stein, and Oliver Baker. And a very special thanks to Hannah Poston. Like what you hear? Then rate and review us on your favorite podcast service. And tell a friend about us, too. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Banging of the Shrew. And visit our website at bangingoftheshrew.com. Thank you for listening. And join us again for the next episode of The Banging of the Shrew. This has been a Tango Silent Films production.